Today is the day. Today, we're gonna to be testing out these massive cleavers on a few obstacles here, okay? We'll call it the Cleaver Olympics, if you will. All right, just so we can recap on the contestants, to my right, we have the Dow Strong Obliterator, all right? Put all the specs in the, in the description so you guys can see them. The next, we have a Frederick Dick. Uh, I think I kept calling it a French style. This may be an Italian style cleaver here. Okay, and then this is a bone cleaver. So I'm not expecting it to per perform that well on meat, but we'll see, we'll give it a chance. Then we have the Dow Strong Ravager, okay? So we'll see how that one turns out. And then finally, we've got the Little Mac. It is the um, Mercer Culinary uh, Meat Cleaver. It's the heavy meat cleaver. It is a uh, X46 CR13 steel. Um, comes in much smaller than the rest of the blades. Um, if you didn't see them side by side, you would have you would think that this is a massive knife. The handle is, um, is humongous, very wide. Um, a lot of uh, real estate to, grisp, to grab on. Uh, it has a, a pretty stout edge on it. And I think the thickness is exactly the same four millimeters uh, as the Ravager. And so hopefully we'll see some of the same performance. I think it's got um, about 200, 200, kilo, 200 grams less than the Ravager. But again, you'll see all the specs there. And so we're gonna start with some brisket, okay? And so I just wanted to get the largest piece of meat that I could find so that we can see sort of how these knives uh, rank up against each other for a certain tasks. After this, we've got some bones. I've got some uh, like short rib chuck bones, uh, much smaller bone, and so we'll be separating them. And then I've got some much larger beef ribs. And so uh, we're gonna see what those do to the knives versus what the knives do to them. Uh, but we wanna see just how easy they are to wield against some larger cuts of meat. These are the things that um, if I'm trying to work on something, they kind of replicate. They're not necessarily the same tasks that you're gonna be using a, a butcher or a cleaver for, um, but these are meat cleavers. You're gonna be butchering nut meat. You're gonna coming into tougher meats, things of that nature, larger pieces of meat. And so um, this Titan board, this is an end grain, has uh, been put up for sacrifice for this test itself. And so I think what we're gonna start with is just from my left, we're gonna start with the Mercer. It's a little bit easier to wield. I'm gonna go full force on this uh, and just hack into things, not worrying about uh, precision or accuracy in the cut so much as it is uh, just how it, uh, how it performs, um, thinking about it in terms of how easy it is to maneuver, to wield, uh, how easy it is to hit where I wanna hit, um, keeping everything else out of the picture. And then um, just to see how easily it goes through whatever it is. And so a uh, brisket can be pretty tough. And so let me move everything over as we uh, make room for the first contestant. Just hack into this corner here. Let's do that. Let's just hack into it, all right? And so we're gonna take the cleaver and we're just gonna go and see what we can cut off, all right? Oh, moving my board. Okay, here we go. All right, and so through the fat, hitting it in the same spot. Oh, damn. cutting through and this, all right. All right, so there's that first one. <laughs> so painful, it's painful. All right, let's go and grab the uh, next one, the Ravager. Okay, or first let's see what we get to the knife, okay. And so looking at the edge from where it's hitting into the board, nothing, we're just chopping into the board itself, but there's no rolling, uh, no chips, nothing on the uh, Mercer. All right, next one, the Ravager. Okay, let's move it right here. 
Here we go. And so this one has a lot more weight, um, a very clean cut through. Um, 200 grams gives a little bit more. And so we can cut through and board is taking a beating. All right, let's go ahead and check it. No rolling, no marring of the edge itself. Uh, it looks pretty good. All right, next one. The bone cleaver. Now this one, I don't expect it to fare very well because it's almost the point of being uh, blunt or dull, but we'll go at it. Oh, jeez, I think I missed. <laughs> and that's the thing about the weight, is that, man, it, the heavier it is, the harder it is to hit exactly where you want to hit. Oh, so, oh, trying to cut into it. A couple cuts, a couple cuts, a couple cuts, a couple cuts. And so it's kind of like a, a little bit of a, a marring texture. You get lots of wood in it, okay? But you cut through. I'm expecting a lot of people to download this video, but that's all right, guys, for science. All right, so, and I can fix the board. Um, no marring. This one has been with me for 10 years, and I've used it on all kinds of bones and stuff, so I already expect this knife to survive a lot of tasks, but um, I... I know my board was going to get the, the brunt of the attack. All right, so back into it. All right, this is the one everybody wants to see. Here we go. Oh, snap. And it cuts like an axe. Here we go. Oh, snap. And it cuts like an axe. And it cuts very cleanly. Um, I don't recommend anyone do this on a wood uh, board like this. Uh, you'll end up with wood chunks and pieces, but you know, make sure you inspect whatever it is before you eat it. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the board there, man. It's taking a beating. Um, that's what I expected. All right, let's go into a little bit of a, a more fattier piece where the decal is, all right? So we're just gonna act like we're gonna make some burn ends, okay? And so we're just cutting into it. Take off this piece, cut into it, cut into it. So everything's shaking. But I mean, that's, that's essen in essence what Butching, or butchering a, a, a piece of meat is all about, you know, if you're really just breaking it down into parts. Okay. All right, we'll go back in reverse order now. Everything is shaking. All right, go ahead. So we can cut into it. Oh! Can't get it. Mm. It cuts in, but I'm not able to get a, a piece that I want. So it, I can do some cutting down into it. So even though it's not the sharpest of the edges, it is possible to get uh, to get some cutting using a, a kind of a sawing action. Okay, so it cuts. I'll go ahead and go back to the dowel strong here and see about doing a cut stroke. And so yeah, this Tapering off really gives it a huge advantage. The weight as well, it's performing very nicely. And so gimmick or not, it is performing very nicely. All right, now we're gonna go back into the Ravager. And the Ravager has just a little bit more, uh, what do you call it? Just a little bit more accuracy, a little bit more finesse in the edge itself. Um, just because it 
uh, is a little bit smaller, a little bit more nimble. Okay. All right. And last, go back to this one. This one I was really excited to get. Um, and this is probably what most people um, experience when they're working with one. This is kind of very small. It's much larger. You got to think about it. This is much larger and, and more uh, stout compared to a, uh, a chef's knife, which, you know, if you're trying to use a chef's knife into something like this, um, you might, you might not get very far, but it's, this right here is, is a heavy cleaver for doing that. Um, and so compared to the larger knives though, this is where a six inch or seven inch edge might not lend itself for a very large task. Okay. And so I might just make burn ends out of these. We'll see. Anyways. All right. So we'll just get into some slicing now. Okay. And so we're just going to slice against the grain with it. And basically, you know, with a, a meat cleaver like this, it's fairly sharp, fairly easy to control and wield through. And so, man, I should use the back edge. And so cutting through, you get nice clean cuts, works very well. All right, we're gonna get down to using uh, to bone soon. And so here, you know, you got a nice pork belly you wanna cut through. This one is very, very good. The Ravager so far, it feels kind of like the happy medium. Okay. This one, I mean, I'll cut it. It's heavy enough. The weight of the knife is doing most of the cutting. And so it's not bad. It's just, we're going to see this one shine against bones. All right. These, I don't know how the edge is going to fare. All right. And so this one, again, doing some burn ends or some pork belly, go to town. It works. It's just heavy. And it's a very nice, a very nice cleaver. Okay. And so not very many people will test this out. All right. Look at that board. Those gashes are amazing. Okay. Let's go with some smaller, smaller ribs here. Okay. And so I'll start with the uh, Mercer and I'm just going to trim off this excess meat here. Keep it fair. And so typically what you might see is somebody just, you know, breaking out a rib like that. And so it's not, I mean, it goes through, you're not really having any gristle or anything down there. Uh, so it works fairly well for that task. Uh, these are much smaller bones. And so we're just going to cut a bone in half now. Okay. Or at least try. Oh, it just rolls in my hand. And so not much damage. And there's meat everywhere. Oh, and so it'll break through. It's not very clean cut. And there's shards of bone everywhere. So we're gonna have to clean out, disinfect everything. But let's check the edge. It's holding up very well, okay? And so it is not, it's not the best at cutting and breaking. These are very hard bones. I don't expect it to do much worse uh, against the larger bones, but the edge, remember, this is what's not necessarily what the knife does to the meat, but what the meat and the bones do to the knife. All right, move that one out. Next one, Ravager. So this might be the end of the Ravager, guys. We'll see. All right, so first thing, we'll cut through the meat, or through the bones, you know, and it cuts through cleanly. Um, and we'll just go at it. So it's a little bit thicker there, kind of around versus a flat. The last one I cut was a, probably one of the smaller bones. And so I can use this one, but we'll just go at it. Okay, here we go. And you, this is where you have to wear protective eye, eye protection. Okay. And so if you're breaking down bones, which most of the time you're not going to, but here we have a little bit of rolling. Okay. So that edge is very sharp, but it's thin. And so we have just the, a very minor, minor rolling. Let's see. 
and we keep going. So we have a little bit of rolling, but not too much. Okay, and so that's what happens when you have a thinner uh, profile in your cut. You're gonna see, and man, I got shards everywhere. My monitors, my camera, maybe on the lens. Oh, good lord! All right, so that one kind of survived. Um, it didn't take much damage. Now, this is the Frederick Dick one. Okay. So, just turn on this side. <laughs> this one's not very sharp, but man, it takes, it won't, there will be zero damage usually on this edge. And it will just break through bones though, okay? You get a good chop on it, you'll break through the bone. Um, it's, it's gonna split whatever it is that you're hitting it with, because that's what this, it's a blunt force object, but there's not gonna be any damage. And there's no rolling or anything on that. That just took no damage. All right, we'll get one more here. Okay. Or I didn't do this. We'll just go through and trim some of the ribs out. Okay. Right. So it works. It'll cut through. All right, here we go. The Ravager now. Okay. And the Ravager works very well. It's very clean. All right. Let me get a bigger one because this is a much larger knife. All right, so we'll take that one. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, <laughs> legit. Fingers crossed. strike that's so heavy there's no way that this won't do that oh shit i hit the camera oops <laughs> all right so this ravager or the obliterator i'm sorry the obliterator is wreaking havoc and there is nothing on that edge nothing absolutely nothing that edge as clean as a whistle, all right? And so, chopping out bones, whatever it is you need to do, I have no clue what you would be doing crushing bones like that. I mean, it will crush and break through the bone. You're gonna have shards everywhere, but it will work. Okay, get a clean whack here. Mm. <laughs> this is so bad. My studio. Oh. Man, I'm probably gonna lose a hand here. I'm trying not to get my hand anywhere near this stuff. But, all right, we'll go through it. All right, one-handed. Ah! And it chops through. And maybe, no, let me see. Maybe the slightest bit of, uh, of rolling, but no chipping. Maybe the slightest, not even really. Let me see. No, it doesn't feel like anything at all. The Ravager is, is doing it, man. It's doing it. I'm sorry, the Ravager. The Obliterator is doing it. It's doing its work. Okay. All right, so mainly, that's mostly what you're gonna be doing is if you're separating ribs. You're, you're hardly ever gonna be cutting through bone, okay? You're just gonna be cutting through cartilage on bone and with a normal knife or with one of these knives, any of these knives, you're gonna be able to handle that task. This is just insane. All right, here we go. So we'll go at it again. Oh man, bone can handle it. No. There's no marks whatsoever. Again, I've had this knife for 10 years. This thing is just massive. It's, if you're breaking down chicken bones, whatever it is, pork bones, this knife is legit. The obliterator, legit as well, okay? All right, we got two more. We'll go through this and we'll just finish up. 
All right, here we go. Ravager, I dig it, man. It's very, very clean. Okay, so here's some cartilage here. We're just gonna chop through cartilage, no problem, all right? Very easy, all right. Now we'll see what happens. Here we go. Oh! Push through. All right, here we go, one more time. Mm. One more time. All right, we split it. So much thinner bone goes through and just slightly, if anything, very slight little rolling on that edge, but nothing that you can't roll out. There's maybe a little bit of chipping. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of chipping and rolling on that. That's a very thin edge though, but it handles it. Um, it's obviously gonna need uh, some work after working on bones. And so it's not gonna be something that's just back to use. Okay. Now the Mercer, same thing, cutting through cartilage, no problem. Uh, the Mercer hasn't taken any damage whatsoever. Still is very strong. Okay. Oh. And so this one I think is under $50. And while it doesn't have quite the same effect as the rest of the knives, this is taking zero damage, okay? No rolling, no chipping, nothing on that edge. And I mean, you're, I'm going full hack, you know, breaking bones, breaking through it. It's just, it doesn't have the same amount of weight. So you don't have the mass allowing you to be as effective on it, okay? Holy crap, this is just, this is just insane. I don't even know if I have to mark this as, uh, as graphic or not. It, poor board. All right, so this one is actually really nice to cut with. So I like the, I like the design on this one. It, this little belly here, the curvature, just really allows for a nice little roll, kind of like a pizza roll, a pizza wheel, okay. This one's more flat, but it cuts perfectly, so. The edge, you know, if you're needing to cut something, works very well. Uh, I don't necessarily use it on cooked brisket. Uh, this is definitely just for uh, butchering, butchering knives pre-cooking. Butchering meat pre-cooking, okay. And this one will do it the same. Not nearly as effective as the Ravager, um, but still, it works. It wedges itself through like it's supposed to. Okay, Ravager, you've already seen. Through the flat end, cuts, through that tip. Ravager is a very nice knife. Um, and so for medium to light tasks, where you need to be doing a lot more slicing, I would use the Ravager. Heavier tasks, I would use the uh, Obliterator. And so the Mercer, just not the design for that. So the Mercer kind of falls out in terms of what it's actually designed to do. It cuts not as easily as the Ravager or even the, uh, the Frederick Dick because it just didn't have the weight behind it. It still works, but the edge is immaculate, man. It held up perfectly. And so it will take any kind of damage you throw at it. Uh, we'll skip the fat part and just go into the meat itself. And so just use the edge and it, it'll cut. The little tip right there works very well. So it's not bad. Personally, if I'm gonna use this one, I'm probably going to use it just to uh, mince things up. So if I've got a small enough piece of meat, just wanted to chop through it, I can do, oh, that doesn't even work very well like that. Yeah. Just doesn't, doesn't do the job very well. So even though it's $50, this still is immaculate. 
it doesn't really perform that task very well. All right, let's grab, let's do a couple more. Oh, where is it? Let's just cut more slices here. And we'll try that same thing with the rest. Let's see. Uh, I'll grab this one. Okay. So if I want to make pieces, you know, cuts through. You can bring out the cut and drag, but it cuts through. Ravager does it. Let's grab one of these bone cleaver. Predator. Bone cleaver does it. Obliterator. Let's find one real quick. Here we go. Obliterator. Pork belly. No match. So there you have it, guys. All my stuff back in the, in the frame. There you have it. When we're talking about whether or not knives are for show, all right, Dow Strong came to play. They made quality stuff. I don't care if it's made in China, Japan, America, Germany, Austria, Spain, Switzerland. I don't care. They came to play. They came prepared. Um, uh, if you want to buy something like this today, you, you can't get this one specifically. They have something that's $164, so almost twice the price uh, or over twice the price of the Ravager uh, and just about $60 or $70 under the, the obliterator. Um, you're probably not going to come across very many tasks like this. If you're making burn ends though uh, and you're using brisket or flat and you just want to hack into it, boom. Uh, if you're just making meat, like just whatever meat you have, you get a, let's say you get a half a cow or something like that, or a quarter of a cow and you want to break it down, you're making stew meat or something like that, boom. Um, unfortunately, the Mercer is just too damn small for what it's intended to do. Uh, it's heavy enough, uh, probably works great on chickens. Um, so if, you're in, if you need to break down a chicken and you don't want to mess up any of the edges you have, $50 and you don't have a lot of space, right here, okay? If you've got a larger task, unfortunately, it's not fair for it to be in this competition because it, these are just, the task was just too large for what it was. I would just wanted to see if it could even handle it. And then the Ravager, this one is, you know, um, this one's nice. It's really good for breaking down bones. There's not gonna be any lick of damage. You don't have to do any kind of work on this one when you get done with the task. So this one, in terms of performance and uh, overall, um, what is it? Uh, uh, what's the word? Ed edge retention, edge retention performance. This one is top of the line because it took zero damage. Not necessarily the most effective at the task. It will perform the task. Uh, and so this one for me was a really good pickup for what I got it for 10 years ago. Uh, it was a, a present for my wife. And so that's an amazing knife. This one and this one, okay? Uh, probably hands down, I'm gonna go with the Ravager. Uh, my pick would be the Ravager, even though I'm gonna have to clean up the edge when I'm done with the task, just because of the way that um, this can't handle bones as well. If I'm gonna be breaking down bones and I only can buy one, I'm buying the Obliterator, right? Uh, if you can buy both, now I see that there's a purpose for both, even though there is overlap for what they can do. But dang it, these were fun to use. I <laughs> I don't wanna neglect what other component you're gonna need because a board is going to take a beating. And so this is not the right board for this task as you guys have seen. And I didn't wanna do it to my cherry because I did not wanna destroy my cherry. Um, but yeah, this there's gashes. I'm gonna have to sand off the, you know, a top layer of this board. So even though you, you may want one, you think you're gonna get it, uh, if you're gonna get it for slicing, this one, the Ravager, hands down. Uh, you're, you've got brisket preparation, you're doing things like that, smoking some meats, not necessarily having to break it down. Ravager, even if you've gotta break the bones down or you're separating the bones through the cartilage, Ravager. This one, you're killing zombies and a cow. You <laughs> <laughs> this one's not going to need any work uh, after this task, so your edge is going to hold up. Uh, it cuts through, and so you can still do it. And this one is actually a, probably a much prettier piece, but as you see on my uh, on my brand, hello, now you know.
Now you know why why I have that one. These are my favorites to use. So maybe I'm biased towards it, but you guys saw the proof. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't really uh, want to cut it down too much. I want you guys to see it all. Everyone who, you know, fans of the channel, you guys are great. I appreciate your comments. They're wonderful. Um, the rest of the people, maybe they just haven't warmed up to me yet. And that's all right. You know, we'll, we'll get through it. If they keep watching my channel, they like the stuff they see. Uh, it's okay. Even if they don't, you know, leaving me some, uh, some good feedback is always helpful so I can grow from it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll take this glove off. Going to have to... Uh, hire a maid to, to clean up all this blood and bones and stuff like that but uh, we'll see anyways thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next one